Good morning, guys. Happy Friday. I'm on my way back to Northern California right now from Pismo Beach. I just spent the last few days of isolation in a completely different area than where I've been, which is awesome because now I feel so much happier and I feel so much more clear. It's really incredible what a change of scenery can do, even if it's just for a couple days. Yee. Over the last week, I've seen so many different articles pop up in my phone about how many people are struggling with anxiety and depression right now, which is not surprising because the coronavirus has affected us in so many different ways, and even in the smallest way. Just being so stir crazy from being locked up and not knowing what to do with all that extra time. Now, for those of you guys who know me really well, you know I've struggled with anxiety most of my life, which on the bright side has led me to learning a lot of tools that I apply daily to help me manage that. So I figured while we're all in lockdown and so many people are struggling with it, I would offer six tips that I apply daily to help me manage my anxiety in hopes that it'll help you manage yours while you're locked up. Tip number one, intentionally fill your mind with positive things. I read an article recently that said the subconscious mind can process 1,200 negative self thoughts per minute. That means we can be walking around thinking, I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy, Maybe I gained a quarantine 15 and I feel really fat and not even realize that we're headed towards anxiety and depression because we're not even aware that we're having those thoughts. That's why it's really important at a time like this to stop, to write down, to speak out loud, and to meditate on things that are more positive like, I'm worthy, I'm not alone, the world is getting better, this is temporary. See with all the external voices in the world like the media, uh, people who are just really afraid, it's really imperative that you take that time to combat the negativity with something that's more positive. Which leads me to point number two, something that I like to apply to my life daily is time in a gratitude journal. I like to write down three to five things that I'm really grateful for, especially since I know my natural tendency is to think about things that I don't have, things that I can't do, things that I haven't achieved. It's really good for me to write down the things that I have and focus on those. It's insane because some days you can wake up in a total funk and almost instantly, Taking that time to write down what you have and what you're grateful for can shift your perspective completely and make you feel 100% better. If you take anything from this whole video, I really hope that you take this and start taking time to write down things that you're grateful for. I'm not gonna geek out on all the science, but if you Google Harvard, gratitude. University of Pennsylvania, gratitude. Work environment, gratitude. A thank you economy. You'll find so much incredible information on the power of gratitude. It'll really impact your life. Tip number three, spend at least one hour a day progressing in your purpose. See, all of us feel like we have a different purpose. Yep, my camera just died right in the middle of tip number three. I'm back at my brother's house now, relaxing. Tip number three, spend at least one hour a day focused on progressing in your purpose. And look, each one of us have a different purpose, right? Some of us, that might be a big spiritual thing. So if that's the case, spend an hour today with Jesus. Read your Bible, pray, invest in that. If your purpose is your family, spend time with them, love on them. Or if you're like me and you're a musician and you feel like your purpose is to inspire the world through that, spend one hour a day writing music, working on your craft, doing something to engage in that area. I feel like so many people today really believe that their joy comes from achieving a specific goal. And what they're finding scientifically is that that's not really the case. What really is the case is progress towards your goal is what brings you joy. So look, if every single day you can know that you're making just a little bit more progress towards achieving your purpose or investing in your purpose, you will feel so much better than the contrary, than getting through the next you know, four to eight weeks and just Realize that all you've done is watch way too much Netflix, which happens to the best of us, by the way. Tip number four, spend. <laughs> Tip number four, spend more time doing things that activate the brain and less time doing things that don't. Have you guys ever seen the comparison where they scan the brain while somebody's watching TV versus when somebody's reading a book? The difference is insane. People who read have way more brain activation than people who watch TV. And I'm not trying to criticize because I've watched way too much Netflix over this pandemic. Whoop, whoop. Tiger King. Actually, that show is kind of weird, isn't it? Why have I even watched that? Anyways, I'm not saying don't watch Netflix. I'm just saying maybe at times hit pause and choose to read a book. Spend some time reading some new information. Learn a new task or a new trade or a new hobby. Learn how to bake. Learn how to exercise. Learn how to run the stock market. Learn how to save money on taxes. You'll feel way Way better by yourself if you choose to do that, especially if you're struggling with anxiety right now. Thank you. Mm. Mm. Yeah, my point was really good. The dog agrees. Tip number five, get outside. Enjoy nature. Get some exercise. Go walk around. You'll be amazed at how much different you'll feel just getting fresh air. That's why companies like Google or NASA spend millions of dollars just making sure that the air quality in their building is right for their employees. Because poor air quality can affect you in so many ways that you don't even think of. It can affect your sleep, 
make you sleep less, create anxiety, create depression, make you feel sick when you're not, make you feel lethargic and slow. So literally just walking outside and spending a few minutes breathing makes a big difference. But look, still practice your social distancing, don't forget about that. I'm not saying go walk with 100 people and breathe in each other's faces. And last but not least, tip number six, FaceTime somebody that you love and wanna connect with every single day. It's really funny how text messaging has become such a massive part of our culture. It's so big, it has almost become the normal communication. People text message each other happy birthday instead of even giving a call. And text messaging is such a weak form of communication psychologically than when you're in person with somebody else. Now look, we can't be face to face with people. But I think the next best thing is FaceTime because your brain interacts and responds so much more when you're seeing somebody's eyes move and their eyebrows move and the excitement on their face and you see them smile and you see them laugh versus even just hearing them laugh over a phone call. So don't take for granted how wonderful it is that we have FaceTime, that we have Zoom, that we have Google Video and that we have House Party and things like that right now and make sure you use it. So look, bringing this thing full circle, I don't mean to sound preachy, look, I've struggled with anxiety my whole life. These tools really help keep me sane, so I hope in some way these tools will help somebody else. But I love you all and hope you stay safe and stay positive during this time.